Hi everyone, in this short tutorial we're going to take a look at varying reinforcement bar utilising Revit 2023. Before we begin, let's take a look at some of the reinforcement settings that will need to be implemented in order to get a correct schedule for the varying rebar. To begin, we'll go to the structure ribbon and then the reinforcement drop down panel. On the reinforcement drop down panel, we'll select reinforcement settings. In the reinforcement settings dialog, let's go ahead and select varying rebar set. And you'll see here that the default is probably number bars individually. This setting will number each varying reinforcement bar with a different rebar number. Normally in the UK, we we'll want to give the rebars the same bar mark, but have a suffix. And normally this takes the form of a letter. So we might have A, B, C, D, E, for example. And you can see here, I've just typed in a lowercase a as the starting suffix. OK, so now that that's set, we can click OK. Let's now have a look at the methods of placing in varying rebar. I'm going to start by taking a look at straight bars that would need to be projecting perhaps vertically up the slab. Now, the rebars would obviously need to be parallel to perhaps this edge here, which means they'll vary on this face. So, once again, I'm going to begin by going to the rebar tool. This dialog box here is just informing us that the rebar settings should be correctly set. Of course, once we've placed rebar in the project, we can't retrospectively go back and make changes to these settings. OK, let's click OK to that. And now you can see we're in the Modify Rebar Context ribbon. Within this tool here, we're going to begin by looking at by two points. And what I'd like to do here is put some rebar perhaps on the far face. So you can see here, I'm going to use the far face reference. I'm placing out vertical reinforcement bar. I'm going to use the method number with spacing. I'm not quite sure how many bars I'll need at the minute, but I've got 22 in there to start with. And you can see I've got a spacing of 200. And we can begin by just roughly sketching where we want our rebar to start and end. And you can see now, as I model my rebar, I haven't quite got enough rebars in that set. So of course, I can go up and actually add an additional one or two bars as required. OK, so I'm just going to place those rebars, as you can see here. I'll then press Escape, and I'll select that rebar set. Now, obviously here, you can see that we have shape handles to lengthen or uh, decrease the length of those rebars. And in fact, here I've probably got one too many. So what I'll do here is I'll just remove one of those rebars. Okay. And here I can just nudge this rebar across. So I'm just using the right hand arrow key here just to actually nudge those across a little bit here. So I can start that rebar on that incline of the slab. And you can see here, as I say, the shape handle is allowing us to change the length of the rebar, but the rebars are parallel rather than actually varying across this face. To make the varying rebar, we can very simply select the varying rebar set tool up on the context ribbon. Let's go ahead and select this. And once we've selected this, we can see that there's no change. Now, this is all according to two things. It can either be the rebar constraints or the length of the rebar set. So now I'm going to go back to the shape handle here and I'm going to adjust that rebar shape length. And you can now see that that rebar is clearly varying. Of course, as I bring that closer to the cover there, you can see it still remains to be varying. But if I put it past that, then you can see eventually that will actually give us then a parallel rebar set. Okay. Another thing that might happen if we pull this back up to where we want it to be, somewhere there. If I start to actually change the length of the rebar along this bottom face here, you'll see eventually that rebar will simply become um, skewed. And you can see here again, we've got uh, not the intended result. So I'll be showing you how to deal with that with rebar constraints. But before we do that, let's just take a look at um, setting this a, a precise length. So I'm gonna to go to edit constraints up on the context ribbon. And of course here, what I'd like to do is take this edge and actually have this varying rebar directly on cover. That means that this value here needs to be set to zero. You can now see our rebar is at that cover. 
if I go to the bottom edge of the rebar here, I can actually set the longest length. Let's say that I want that longest bar there to be perhaps um, negative 2000. Yeah, I can simply type that in here and you can now see we have our rebar constraints as required. So I'll go ahead and select finish. Now, just to show you how we could actually then detail this and obviously schedule it, what I'm going to now do is just get Revit to recover the middle bar in that rebar range, like so. I'll switch the thick lines on and you can now see we have that single rebar in that rebar set visible. We'll now put a range indicator across that. Now in Revit, that's called a multi-rebar annotation. We'll select the annotate ribbon. We'll go to the tag panel and we'll select multi-rebar annotation. Notice I'm using the aligned method here. I can select my rebar, and then in this example here, I'm going to actually place out the, uh, the leader over here, okay, and we'll place that out. Okay, so you can now clearly see the, uh, the tag that's been presented to us. So we've got 22 H12s, it's bar mark one, and the varying rebar is ranging from A to V with a 200 mil spacing. If I go back, and actually then remove one of these bars, for example, you can now see obviously we've got A to U. Yep, so you can see how that is actually working. Let's now take a look at that in a bending schedule. So I'll select the rebar and I'm gonna make sure it's in the correct partition. Okay, so in this case, that's going to be a partition called slab. And what I'll then do is open up that bending schedule. So in this case, I'm going to take a look at one of the sheets that the bending schedule is assigned to. Uh, perhaps this sheet in here and we can clearly see in here that we have the member slab and you'll now notice the bar mark is consistent so that's bar mark one because obviously that's the first piece of rebar that I've placed in but you can then see the suffix is ranging uh, with those letters that we set up earlier on from A to V and of course everything else about the uh, schedule is correct obviously you can see the A leg of that rebar then changing and of course the length of each bar Okay, and obviously down here, we now have a total weight of all of those rebars. Okay, so that's obviously quite useful. Let's go back and have a look at that in 3D now. So we're going to our 3D working view over here. And of course, now you can see all of those rebars displayed here. And of course, don't forget in 2023, we can just go from medium, for example, there, which shows us just a single line for the rebar or fine. So that's a lot easier than it was in older releases. What I'd like to do now is just show you how we would actually deal with a U-bar. Now, of course, the U-bar that's going to connect the two layers of rebar together on this slab here doesn't want to be parallel to this face here. It wants to obviously be aligned to these bars I've put in. So let's see how we would actually go about placing one of those U-bars in. So I'm going to begin here just by going back and actually showing all those bars in the set. So we'll go back and do that just temporarily. Okay. What I'll do in this case is I'll just delete that varying range rebar in there and we'll create a section here where our first U-bar is going to want to be created. Now, of course, we could actually place out the U-bar in plan as well. We don't have to do it in section, but uh, it's just a little bit easier for us if we do it like this. So let's select the slab. We'll go to the rebar tool. In this example here, we're going to use the sketch option. We'll select the slab. And now I can actually sketch in my reinforcement bar. So, of course, I'm going to keep this to cover like so. That rebar has now been drawn. So we'll now actually use the finish edit mode to actually place that rebar down. Obviously, we can fine tune it because I've just sketched the A and C legs. Um, they're not at any precise distance. So in this case here, I'm going to set both of those to 600 like so. And now we'll actually go back and look at that level one plane. Okay, now of course, um, even in Revit 2023, we still have to make this uh, rebar unobscured. So in our level one plane, we'll view unobscured like so. And you can now see that rebar has been presented to us. Now, this is the one that I obviously want to now vary. Okay, so let's now begin by actually selecting that rebar. First thing we can do is go ahead and set up our uh, layout. So we want number with spacing and we said the spacing was 200. And I think we ended up with, uh, perhaps it was 21 bars, I believe, across there, or in this case, actually 22, of course, wasn't it? 
Okay, so there's our bar. Now, obviously we can see this isn't correct. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the varying rebar up here. And again, we can see that there's not uh, any sort of real change here. But once again, what we'll better do is actually use the rebar constraints to help us out here. So we'll click on rebar constraint. I'm gonna select this edge of the U-bars and then this inclined edge on the cover. Straight away now, you can see that that varying range rebar is now placed in. But notice what's happened. Each U-bar is exactly the same size. Okay, so they're not different sizes. They are just skewed. So even if we're using varying range rebar, we can actually then generate that skewed rebar range. So I'll go ahead and select finish there. Let's select the rebars again. And again, I'll assign this to the correct partition. So that was slab. And I'll go ahead and take a look at my bending schedule again. And of course, you can now see that on the bending schedule, we have bar mark two, but notice I've got 22 of them. So obviously here, we can schedule out that skewed rebar range. It's the same U-bar, okay? So it's got exactly the same dimensions, but it's just skewed, okay? So there we are. So you can now see two use cases for varying range rebar. So we can use it to actually get varying length rebar, as you could see in the first example, or to generate skewed rebar ranges. Okay, hope you found that useful and speak to you soon.